and welcome to my channel. So today I'm just going to talk to you a little about what I've been up to. Um, last video I was talking about getting into UX design and uh, I want to do a boot camp that costs about $7,000 and so I was planning to save money and um, then enter that cohort in the fall which is like this fall. Um, but then I decided like I don't really want to invest that much money into something that I'm not really sure I want to do yet. And so I said, let me just think about the different tech jobs that I am interested in and start learning a little bit about all of them so that I can narrow down more what I'm interested in. Um, and kind of like the vision for next steps in my career. Um, so right now, I am looking at data analytics, um, and the reason I chose that is because it's directly applicable to my job right now, where, which I'm a, I'm a child trauma counselor, um, and I'm the only clinician at my organization. I work at a nonprofit organization, and we, I work with a team of like social workers and um, attorneys, and we help people file for guardianship, and then I help with you know the kiddos with any trauma issues that they're having. So one of the things that our director approached me with was trying to figure out like how effective is our clinical program? How do we track that in a HIPAA compliant way? And how do we communicate that to um, not only donors but to funders, you know, for grants and things. So I was like, huh, that's an interesting project. I know some of data analytics because I took a lot of qualitative and quantitative methods research courses in graduate school. Um, I, did a, I did a dissertation where I conducted a quantitative analysis, um, and so I do have a background in that. It's just that from a data analytical standpoint, as far as like what are data analytical people doing in the workforce right now, I don't know. Um, you tell me things like Python, R, SQL, I don't know what any of that means because in graduate school, I learned everything through Qualtrics and SPSS. Um, those are the two things that I used and you don't see that a lot in job descriptions. I've noticed, I've noticed you see a lot of R, Python, SQL and some other things, Tableau or things like that that I've never even heard of. And I'm like, well, when they're teaching you these things in graduate school, why don't they teach you the other softwares available too? Um, maybe just choose a couple because people aren't really using SPSS um, in a lot of places. So I just found that interesting. Um, so that's what made me want to look into this. Uh, so I'm starting with that first and then I'll go into UX, exploring that a little bit more. Um, the other thing about that is my friend is a school psychologist and she is actually thinking of switching into the tech field as well and she's looking at UX design and so she's planning to teach herself UX and then teach me what she knows. So I'm like, well, if I can get a free education, then I may as well do that instead of paying for a boot camp. Um, anyway. <laughs> So anyway, right now I'm taking a the Google certification course for data analytics and I'm taking the whole entire course um, and like there's a, you can like test out of certain parts. So like if you have experience with like Excel, Google Sheets, and you know like how to make a table, things like that, very basic things that most of us millennials learned in grade school. Um, if you want to test out of that, I think there's a way that you can. I didn't try to do that because I felt like the course was created for people who were interested in being a data ana um, being data oh, being data analytics professionals. Being data analysts, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. <laughs> the course was created for people who are trying to be data analysts, and I felt like if I skip parts that I might be doing myself a disservice, like what is different about certain things that I learned in school about how to make a table and formulas and things like that versus what they're teaching on this Google course. And um, quite honestly, not much is different, but there are, are like a few things that I didn't know that I could do in Excel. And I mean, I knew I could do it, I just didn't know how and it shows me. So I'm glad I didn't test out of certain things, but at the same time, 
some things are just kind of like boring okay make a table and sort you know okay i've done this since i was like in third grade <laughs> And I know not everybody has. I mean, there's like people that are like boomers who are switching fields and maybe they need to know how to do that, but I don't. And so I got through those parts of the course pretty quickly. Um, but then there's other parts that like more talk about SQL and that takes me a while um, because like I said, I didn't learn SQL in graduate school. They don't, they didn't teach me that. Maybe they teach it in other schools. I didn't learn it. Um, and so, <laughs> Um, yeah, it's interesting so far, and I'm hoping that I'm able to apply these skills, like I said, to help further our clinical program um, where I currently work, where I am the only licensed clinician. Um, so I have direct access to data that I can um, use with permission, obviously, to figure out the effectiveness of our program and how do you measure the effectiveness of somebody, you know, of, you know, and it's also, it's, it's going to be challenging because diagnoses are present differently in different people. So for example, I can have a kid with PTSD and another kid with PTSD, and I could see great progress with one kid, not the other, but then you have to think about well, what modalities are you using? And if I'm using TFCBT for both children, or maybe one child, TFCPT doesn't work as well and I need to switch modalities to something else. And so um, there's a lot of factors and variability in that. So how do you really like make an objectified decision based on all of these different variables? They'll be very interesting. Um, and this is kind of like what I like most about research is that there's so many questions, so many variables to think about and finding the answer is exciting to me. So um, I'm excited for this project. And um, so yeah, basically that's where I am right now with like furthering my education and my skills and things like that. Taking a data analytics course with the Google search. So far I like it and um, yeah, I'll keep you posted. I'm in the second course. There's five of them in the certification program and I'm in the second and I got, I got through the second, the first one, within a week or maybe less. And then I'm half, I'm more than halfway through the second one and I started like three days ago. So I'm going pretty quickly through it. But like I said, a lot of it I learned in graduate school. So a lot of it is talking about basic, like what is, what is your gut instinct versus an objectified, like data-driven decision. Like that's obvious to me because I, know that already and I think a lot of people whether you went to grad school or not you can answer that question um so a lot of it is just like basic stuff right now and I think when I get to course like three and four where you actually use SQL and Tableau and things like that that's when I will have to take a little bit more time to know like to figure out how to do things because if I'm being honest SQL was introduced to me in the la in the first course I think yeah, in the first course. And I, it took me a little bit to get through those modules because I was like, this doesn't make any sense to me. Do I put, you know, do I put from and then enter and then put the thing? Do I put from asterisk? But <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out, but I'm sure I will. And it's kind of fun to learn a new skill. Um, aside from that, I am also taking a medical neuroscience course. Not because I want to go to medical school, but because I'm interested in ADHD and PTSD. You know, as a trauma counselor, I see a lot of ADHD presenting symptoms. But you, like, if you're a clinician, you know that a lot of times, especially in children, PTSD can present as ADHD symptoms. And so you'll see a lot of young kids, especially like kindergartners, misdiagnosed with PTSD or with ADHD when they really have PTSD. And so I kind of want to learn more about um infant and toddler and early childhood development in the brain and um how a trauma can impact certain parts of the brain in the development um, versus adhd how does that present differently in the physiology of the brain and then that'll help me understand the behaviors a little bit better so i'm kind of going backwards to undergrad um and <laughs> taking some neuroscience courses just like as a refresher and to better understand it's a medical neuroscience course, so it's not really like uh, like a 
basics, but it, it starts with basics like everything else, but it gets a little bit more in depth, which I'm interested in and excited about. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Um, just learning and trying new things and we'll see what happens and uh, let me know if you have questions in the comments or a topic that you want me to cover. All right, bye.